But he is surging right now in the polls, and the Democrats seem to love Bernie, in particular, young people seem to love Bernie. So I thought we'd take a little bit of time today to talk about the Bernie Sanders phenomenon. I haven't talked too much about Bernie, partially because I think you all know what I think about Bernie and, and, um, and his ideas and his uh, policies. But I thought we'd talk a little bit about uh, Bernie Sanders and what he represents and why he's so successful. I think that's the real question is, is, you know, has America become such a place as to make possible a, a Bernie Sanders, to facilitate a Bernie Sanders? And that is, um, we will see. We will see in the weeks to come uh, whether that is the case. I mean, I, I uh, really hate Bernie Sanders and despise the man. Um, you know, because of his policies, because of his ideas, because of his history, because of his, uh, his, you know, his Marxist roots and his support both for the Soviet Union, for, for Maduro's, uh, for, for Chavez's uh, Venezuela. Uh, he hasn't seen a socialist regime he didn't like at least at some point in his life. The man is clearly committed to a socialist agenda, even though he tries to portray socialism as being Scandinavia. Right. And, uh, you know, here we are, a candidate like that, a candidate who is uh, an apologist for communism and socialism's worse, somebody who, who visited the Soviet Union, partied in the Soviet Union, uh, said positive things about the Soviet Union and supported the regime of Chavez in Venezuela, said very positive things about Chavez in Venezuela, and has and calls himself a socialist without any without any qualms. Um, that you know, it's shocking that somebody like this is a viable candidate in a major political party in the United States. Um, it, it truly is stunning. Um, somebody says uh, he's making a prediction that if Sanders gets a nomination, Trump will win. I actually think that's true. I think that's true. And, and I think it's primarily because what will what'll happen. I think Sanders will steal a lot of Trump voters, and we'll get to that. So I think some people who voted for Trump will tr vote this time for Sanders, who would not vote for other people in the Democratic Party, would, would vote for Sanders. But I think that if you look at the mix, a lot of moderate Democrats and a lot of, a lot of you know, mainstream Democrats would vote for Donald Trump or stay home if Bernie Sanders is the candidate. Uh, he's yet to prove he can bring out the black vote, uh, which is crucial for winning in places like um, Philadelphia or Pennsylvania, Michigan, and places like that. He's yet to prove that he can do that. I, I, I um, you know, I don't, you know, I don't think that he, so it, it's not clear to me that he can win the Democratic nomination. But if he won the Democratic nomination, I just don't see how he could beat Trump given that I think that the many mainstream Democrats, just like there were many never-Trumpers, I think they're going to be even more, even more never-Bernie on the left. And that'll mean there'll be a lot of no-shows uh, on, the, on the Democratic Party side, people who won't even vote. And then I think uh, a lot of moderates and a lot of middle-of-the-road people. I think, you know, it'll be interesting, but I, it'll be interesting. Now, let me just say this. I'm terrible at political predict predictions, so just humor me, right? It, you know, I, I, I couldn't have imagined Trump would win. Although, in the competition with Clinton, I actually thought he would win uh, towards the, you know, towards the as, the, as the election, as November approached, I thought he had a better and better chance of actually winning. So it wasn't shocking to me that he won. But I didn't think he would win the Republican nomination. So... I've been wrong in politics over and over and over and over again, so I, I wouldn't take my predictions. But I do think it's an interesting, interesting to think about it, right? Uh, yeah, somebody Bernie is 
Bernie is the, you know, represents everything that this country has stood against for since its founding, and certainly since the rise of the Soviet Union in in um, in 1914. So so uh, sorry, 1917. What am I thinking? Uh, so Bernie, you know, Bernie represents everything that is antagonistic, the antithesis to everything this country stands for. I don't think there's any world in which one could vote for Bernie Sanders. Uh, but let's, let's, let's talk about why, why he's popular. Well, because he, he really uses the same technique, in a sense, as Trump, and he leverages the same existential angst, the same frustration, the same alienation, the same, um, you know, just the, the idea that, that something's wrong in this country, something's fundamentally wrong, things are falling apart, things are working clearly in the wrong direction. And he taps into that, just like ta Trump tapped into that. And of course, there's a sense in which all of that is true. But what Trump does and what Bernie does very well is they appeal to people by saying, look, the world is truly falling apart. The world is really rotten for you. And I know who is to blame. You know, so for Trump, it was China and it was immigrants and then it was the elites. For Bernie, it's much closer to home and much more visceral and much more right here. And in that sense, much more, even more anti-American. I think Trump's appeal is very anti-American, but I think Bernie's is explicitly anti-American. He's telling us, no, the, the villains are the corporations. The villains are the 1%, the rich, the wealthy, the bankers, Wall Street, and of course, the elites, so they both share a hatred of the elites, whether it's media elites, intellectual elites, wealth elites, Wall Street-like elites, cultural elites. And they use that. They use the fact that most people seem alienated from those elites, particularly the intellectual elites, that most people don't care about the issues that the elites think about. And most people think that the elites are manipulating the system on their own behalf. So blame the bankers. Blame the 1%. Blame the corporations. The evil corporations are responsible for all the evils in our country. And young people in particular, people who don't have a lot of experience in the world out there, people who are ignorant, people who are being trained, almost brainwashed by our, our government educational system, but even the private schools, to hate business, to hate Wall Street, to hate finance, to hate capitalism, and to associate whatever troubles exist in America today with capitalism. So we live in a capitalist system, supposedly. And therefore, all the troubles are the troubles of capitalism. We've got a whole generation, several generations now, that have been trained with explicit leftist, Marxist interpretation of American history. The, the, the exploitation of capitalism. The evil of wealth. And the evil of the country. The inherent evil of the country. They take real injustices, real weaknesses of America and turn them into the defi like slavery and racism and define them into the defining characteristics of the country. And instill in people and have been instilling in people for decades and decades a class warfare mentality. A class warfare mentality. It's you against them, and them, and them is the rich, 
the connected, the wealthy, the successful. And this is partially why I think Bernie's going to have a hard time. Because I don't think this message resonates in places, centers, that have significant democratic support, both financial and in terms of voters. So I don't think Bernie really resonates in Silicon Valley. I mean, those of you in Silicon Valley can tell me I'm wrong. But I don't think Silicon Valley's leftism is the kind of Bernie Sanders leftism. I think it's much more of a, of a politically correct, anti-free speech, um, transgender rights, uh, you know, social issues. leftism. Whereas Bernie is an old-style socialist. He's an old-style class warfare, and I don't think the class warfare plays in his constituencies in places like, in democratic constituencies in places like New York and California. I don't think he can win the primary in New York, and I don't think he can win the primary in California. And can he win, can he win the democratic nomination, and can he win the presidency without winning with the Democratic primary, California and New York. I'm just, I'm skeptical. Yeah, I think somebody says, uh, Jack says, that Silicon Valley people tend to be more for Warren than Sanders, and I think that's right. I think Warren is just as bad on many economic issues. But Warren has positioned her views as saving Silicon Valley, saving capitalism. Sanders has no interest in saving capitalism. He wants to smash it and destroy it. What he's appealing to is hatred. What he's appealing to is nihilism, but what he's also appealing to is frustration and anger. He's appealing to the same emotions that Donald Trump appealed to. And I think he, he'll attract a very similar audience. I wouldn't be surprised if some Republicans in Iowa are going to caucus as Democrats who voted for, Ray, for, for um, Trump will now vote for Bernie Sanders. He's appealing to the working class. He, you know, I don't know if you've read his trade policy, but his trade policy is straight out of Donald Trump, right? Yeah, I mean, uh, let's go to trade policy. Uh, where is it? Trade. I've, got, I'm, I'm, I've opened up his, uh, there's tr fair trade, fair trade, right? It says fundamentally rewrite all our trade deals to deals to prevent the outsourcing of American jobs and raise wages. Ensure that strong and binding labor, environmental, and human rights standards are written into the cortex of all trade agreements. So he's appealing to the same people who hate trade. Now, Bernie Sanders is, is pretty anti-immigration. He won't run on that, of course, because the Democratic Party has positioned itself as pro-immigration, and he doesn't want to alienate too many people. But he is anti-immigration. So he's not going to run on a huge, he's going to run on an on a altruistic immigration policy. Oh, we need, to, we, we need to stop deporting people, and we need to, we need to do more in terms of uh, uh, asylum. But he doesn't want to bring people in with jobs. He's anti-immigrants you know, uh, who get a job because he doesn't want the competition for American workers. So Sanders appeals to that working class but he appeals to their hatred, to their resentment, and to their alienation. And what's scary, I think, is if you take the core Trump supporters and you take the core Bernie supporters and you add them up, I mean the core ones, the ones that excuse everything, the ones that are anti-trade, the ones that are hate immigrants, the ones that, you know, are... are, are, are you know, really resent the elites and want to want to clamp down on media and want to shut down Silicon Valley. If you add them all up, I think it's a large percentage of the American public is now on economic issues, fundamentally on the left, whether through a Donald Trump form of fundamentally to the left or Bernie Sanders, and fundamentally in some core way nihilists in some way about tearing down. 
So Santa stands for all that is worse in the democratic agenda, at least on economic issues. I don't think Bernie really cares about the social issues. I don't think Bernie cares about transgender and, and racism and stuff like that. He says he does, and he talks the talk, but it's not his thing. He is an old line socialist who's interested in ripping down wealth and tearing down corporations and bringing people down, successful people. And he's not, you know, he's a, he's a real old line socialist. So what is he, what are his big issues? Well, obviously Medicare for all. No compromises, no private insurance. Really, at the end of the day, no private doctors. Everybody gets paid by the government. Every good, good buddy gets paid what the government pays, which means government becomes the, uh, I mean, doctors become the equivalent of government employees. He's huge on the Green New Deal, and I did a whole show on the Green New Deal, so I'm not going to repeat here all the evils of the Green New Deal. But he's, he's a big time Green New Deal, and there's no accident that AOC, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, is one of his big supporters and endorsers and spokesmen out there. He's big on college for all, free college. All public institutions should be free for anybody who wants to go. All college debt should be written off. He stole that from, I guess, from, from Elizabeth or she stole it from him or whatever. He's for workplace democracy. Now, workplace democracy, this is the big socialist agenda. You know, huge support for unions. Big, uh, you know, federal protection for fired workers. Provide unions with all kinds of protections and, you know, in a sense, force the unions onto business. But in a big way, in a bigger way than I think even FDR and, and, and Democrats of the past were. And dictate wages for employees. So he says deny federal contracts to companies that pay what he calls poverty wages or outsource jobs overseas or engage in union busting or deny good benefits pay and pay CEOs outrageous compensation packages. He has a whole agenda about figuring out ways to lower CEO pay. So there's a whole thing here about, um, you know, where is it? Uh, uh, let's find. I mean, he wants to tax taxes on the rich. Um, yeah, he says, uh, corporate accountability and democracy fundamentally shift the wealth of the economy back into the hands of the workers who created it. That's pure Marxism. Break up corporate... Uh, uh, corporate mergers and monopolies, split up companies, and then uh, increase the taxes. And he's got some provision here. I, I, you know, somewhere here he says, if a company pays the CEO a lot, it should pay more taxes. The more the CEO gets paid, the more the gap between the CEO and the average pay of an employee, the bigger the gap, the more they will be taxed. In general, he wants to increase taxes dramatically increase taxes on in corporations. And we know, and I've talked about this before, corporate taxes are paid by consumers and employees. It is a tax on employment and a tax on consumption. A tax on, it's a, it's a, in that sense, it's a regressive tax. You would think that Bernie Sanders would be against a regressive tax, but he doesn't want to tell you that corporations are just legal entities that pass through all their costs and they don't pass them, they don't pass them to, uh, you know, to uh, the shareholders. They pass them because he, he needs a villain. He needs a villain. And uh, the corporations are his best villains. And what do we do to villains? We penalize them. We tax them. So you go through his agenda. I mean, it's, it's truly... Uh, you know, you couldn't come up with a more consistently Marxist, I mean, without being an all-out communist, which he's not, right? He's not advocating for uh, the dictatorship of the proletarian yet, right? But all the classical old-line socialist policies of 30 to 40 to 50 to 60 years ago, not the communist, but the socialist ones, 
the ones that led us very close to communism, the ones that were horrific and basically impoverished the United Kingdom, basically impoverished U European countries that use them, and basically impoverished any country that applies them. And this is, by the way, much more radical, much more consistently socialist, much more anti-capitalist than anything any Scandinavian country has. No Scandinavian country has laws like this relating, for example, to corporations. And by the way, corporate taxes in Scandinavia are relatively low because they know that corporations don't actually pay taxes. Right? He wants to expand Social Security. Right? Expand it. It's going bankrupt. But we're going to expand it. We're going to expand Medicare to Medicare fall. We might as well have Social Security fall. He wants to do federal, he wants to have the post office do banking, which is basically to nationalize parts of the banking system. Right? High speed internet for all. The government is going to fund internet for everybody, right? That'll encourage a lot of, you know, investment in, in, uh, in, in internet and high tech and fiber in the ground and infrastructure because, hey, companies love to compete with the government when the government is offering something for free. Uh, I mean, at every level, this guy is, you know, massive taxes on the rich, right? For the, you know, uh, particularly on the richest of the rich, Real Wall Street reform, break up the banks, reinstate Glass-Steagall, cap interest rates, cap interest rates, which is going back to a failed policy of the United States from the 30s, where interest rates on savings were capped from the 1930s until the 1970s, interest rates on savings in the United States, regulation Q, it was called, were capped in the United States, a complete and utter disaster that partially ultimately led to the SNL crisis and the creation, by the way, of things like money markets and many, many other uh, financial innovations that were meant to get around this kind of nonsense. So, you know, Bernie Sanders is, and so, so he's just, he's just, you know, what do you call it? He's he's a leftist Marxist economic, you know, driven by envy, capitalizing on the age of envy, capitalizing on the fact that people have been conditioned to be envious of those who are successful. And his appeal comes from a whole, for generations of, of people being taught that all their problems are, 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 are caused by corporations and wealthy and the 1% and Wall Street and bankers and capitalism. It is a consequence of a morality of altruism and a morality of, of uh, 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 attitude towards envy. And it is a, um, it is a consequence of a country that is lost. It's lost its way. It's lots his way. And it's not like times are that hard. That's the other thing. You know, in 1970, what is it, 1972, McGovern ran against Nixon, and McGovern was quite a leftist. I don't think quite as leftist as Bernie Sanders, was quite as leftist. And um, the country defeated him in a landslide. And, but the reason he could even get the nomination is because there was real angst. You know, Nixon, there was inflation. There were, Nixon had imposed price controls, maybe just after the election he imposed them, but there were price controls. There was inflation. There was a war in Vietnam. There was violence. There was crime. I mean, things were really rotten in the day-to-day -day lives of Americans. I don't think things are quite as rotten in the day-to-day -day lives of Americans. The economy's not great, but it's not bad. There's no inflation. We're fighting wars, but n meaningless wars, stupid wars, but not anywhere on the scope and the scale of Vietnam. We're not seeing body bags come back every day in a failed war. There just isn't 
the objective existential angst that would justify people becoming so crazy as in you know so desperate as to elect a Bernie Sanders or for that matter in my view a Donald Trump now culturally philosophically ethically morally the country's gone to hell and it's much worse than the 70s and that explains where we are today collectivism is rampant on left and on right tribalism is rampant an appeal to tribalism, to, to kind of a, an altruistic tribalism. Well, tribalism is altruistic and altruism leads to tribalism. But it's more explicit today than ever. And resentment, envy, hatred of the other. In Trump's case, the other being immigrants or, or China. In Bernie Sanders' case, the other being the rich, the corporations, the elites. But it, it is truly, truly a depressing and sad statement about this country that this is where we are today. That we have an election that is so dominated by fear, hatred, resentment, envy. Truly, truly sad state of America that America supports this. And an overwhelming, it looks like a majority of Americans, you know, maybe a minority, a large minority of Americans support these kind of policies, this kind of attitude, this kind of atmosphere. Okay. Um, so we'll see. We'll see if Bernie wins. Um, I hope not. I hope the Democrats come up with something better. I hope the country rejects Bernie resoundly. I hope even the left in America rejects Bernie resoundly so that we don't have to face a Bernie Sanders, Donald Trump election. Um, I, I, but we will see. We will see. It is very, very, um, you know, it is very early and it looks pretty bleak. Again, Bernie Sanders surging in the polls. And I've said before, I think Elizabeth Warren is more dangerous because I think she's more electable. And I think she's more, she's smarter and could get more done. But the very fact that Bernie Sanders is as successful is a very bad sign for this country and where we are heading. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world to the dark ages and to the rule of the collectivist brute. Using the super chat, and I noticed yesterday when I appealed for uh, support for the show, many of you stepped forward and actually uh, supported the show for the first time. So I'll do it again. Maybe we'll get some more today. Um, if you like what you're hearing, if you appreciate what I'm doing, then I appreciate your support. Uh, those of you who don't yet support the show, please take this opportunity. Go to yourronbookshow.com slash support or go to subscribestar.com, your own book show. And, um, and, and make a kind of a monthly contribution uh, to, keep this, uh, to keep this going. I'm not sure when the next...